Hey, how are we doing everyone? Welcome to The Bearded Medic. The immune system is a challenging and confusing topic which can be epitomised by this image. The purpose of these videos is to simplify these concepts into something a lot more manageable and streamlined. This video is going to take you through an introduction to the immune system, naming and identifying the components involved in an immune response. The immune system serves to protect the body from harmful pathogens, also repairing the body after any events that have caused harm. The body has a number of primary defences to prevent pathogens entering the body. These can be grouped into physical, chemical and biological. For example, we have tight junctions in the skin, lysosomes in tears and the normal microbiota in the gastrointestinal tract. If pathogens breach these defences, they can come into contact with the immune cells and proteins. Firstly, the immune cells. Tissue resident immune cells first come in contact with these pathogens, the main ones being macrophages and dendritic cells. Using pattern recognition receptors, these cells recognise and process pathogens, releasing molecules called cytokines that induce a further immune response. More on those later. Monocytes are the precursor to dendritic cells and macrophages. These cells are only found in the blood. When they exit blood vessels, they are then macrophages. After the initial recognition by the tissue resident cells, we have the granulocytes. Neutrophils, basophils, mast cells and eosinophils, named due to their granulated appearance on microscope. Neutrophils are also phagocytic and mainly serve to destroy as much pathogen as possible. They are the most abundant white blood cell. Azinophils respond when sensitised to threats such as parasites by the antibody IgE. They are also involved in hypersensitivity reactions like allergies. Basophils act to heighten an immune response. There are low levels of them in circulation. Mast cells are also heavily involved in hypersensitivity and inflammation. We also have natural killer cells, which are lymphocytes that specifically target and destroy virally infected cells. In terms of proteins, we have the complement system. This involves three pathways which lead to pathogens being marked for destruction. Levels of other proteins also increase as a result of the initial response. This initial response is what is called the innate immune response. The innate response is non-specific and is all that is usually needed for most pathogens, lasting anywhere between 0 and 12 hours after infection. The innate response will be covered in depth in another video. If the pathogen overcomes the innate response, a more specific response is needed, and this is the adaptive response. The main cells involved are B lymphocytes and T lymphocytes. Each of these cells complete their development in key areas of the body. B is for bone marrow and T is for thymus. There are also different types to each of these cells. T cells are mainly activated by dendritic cells presenting antigens in the lymph node, another key component of the immune system. Their type is dependent on the cytokines released by those dendritic cells. B cells are usually activated by T cells in the lymph node, but can also be activated independent of T cells. They release proteins called antibodies to neutralise pathogens or sensitise them to other immune cells. B cells, along with dendritic cells and macrophages, can be classed as antigen-presenting cells, antigen being parts of the phagocytose pathogen. Both T and B cells play a major role in memorising pathogens to initiate a quicker response in the future. The coordination of all these responses depends heavily on signalling between cells. This signalling is in the form of cytokines. Cytokines are a general term for small protein-like molecules, such as interleukins. So just to recap, the body has primary defences to potentially harmful pathogens. If these defences are breached, immune cells become responsible in coordinating the response to the pathogen. The innate response is non-specific and quick, and can lead to the adaptive response, which is tailored to the pathogen but takes longer. This can lead to the formation of memory cells, where upon infection by the same pathogen, the response is quicker and more efficient. The main parts of the body that are relevant to the immune response is the thymus, bone marrow and lymphatic system. So that's it for the introduction. If you have any questions be sure to leave them in the comments to be answered. And if you'd like to test yourself, head over to Instagram and complete the quizzes. Hope you found the video useful, if you did leave a like. If you didn't, leave a dislike and comment constructively on how these videos can be made better. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.
Goodbye.